Happy Sunday. Welcome to St. Cuthbert Episcopal Church. Please make your presence known in the comment section on the right-hand corner of your screen. Thank you for being with us this morning. If you would like to share this service with those whom you love, please also hit that share button and it will go out as God's word to those around us. Be an evangelist for Jesus this morning. I want to thank you again for worshiping with us, and I want to also want to thank you for your continuous contributions to the mission of our church. If you would like to make a financial donation, please go to our website. You will find information how you can make an online offering, or you can write a check and put it in the mailbox. Our address is also on the website, or you can just drive by if you're locally and Put your offering in the mailbox by the door. It will be warmly received and blessed as we gather. The counters gather together during the week and um, keep our church ongoing. Thank you for your support. Let us begin our hearts for worship to the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Please recite these words, these, this invocation for the Holy Spirit to come into our midst. I know we are transmitting electronically, but the Holy Spirit is with us wherever we are. Say these words along with me. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Say these words of praise along with me as well. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please now prepare your hearts for the reading of God's word. The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 50, beginning at verse 15. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave us this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is read responsibly by half verse. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dwelt with us, dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. The epistle is taken from Romans chapter 14, beginning at verse 1. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they must they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in the honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, 
whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brothers or sisters? Or you, why do you despise your brothers or sisters? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then this fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed them over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. As we profess in our creeds that we believe in all things seen and unseen in the spirit world around us, as we lift our praise to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With that said, there are things that we encounter in the spirit realm that are often sometimes hard to explain, hard to understand with our human intellect. But because we believe in all things seen and unseen, we know that the kingdom of God exists all around us and wherever we are. And often these experiences can be wonderful and bliss. But because we live in a spirit-filled world, there are often other experiences and encounters that we face that are unexplained and have an evil intent. They're opposite 
of God's grace and goodness. And when we encounter such things that we perceive to be as sometimes evil, I think a natural response is to ask God, why does such an occurrence happen? Why does this happen, Lord? Because there's really no logical answer as to why evil exists alongside God's goodness and grace. Yet asking such questions, I think, can strengthen our life of faith. They often can challenge us to what we deeply believe in God's kingdom all around us. And when it gets down to it, we can only live by faith. One of the prayers that Jesus was recorded as saying in John chapter 17, while he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was praying before his violent arrest and before he was beaten and nailed to a cross to die. It was this triumphant prayer that's all through chapter 17 of John's gospel. And Jesus was praying this prayer to God the Father, but he was also praying for you and I. And because this prayer is a triumphant prayer, Jesus continues to pray for this prayer in the heavenly realms for you and I. And in verse 14 through 16, Jesus said, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I Jesus said, do not belong to the world. Now, with those words in mind, we know from Scripture from the very beginning of time that God created this world with God's image and purpose for his goodness. So in the freedom of God's created order, with God's intention of goodness and love, human disobedience and sin crept in this world. And so by a biblical definition, we could say that this garden planet of the world that we live in is a worldly system that is sometimes influenced by Satan. So by our faith, we affirm through God's word that we currently live in this world, but we do not completely belong to this world. That despite whatever can happen to us, we can ultimately choose God's eternal salvation made known to us through Jesus Christ. As 1 John chapter 5, verse 19 reminds us, We know that we are God's children, and that the whole world lies under the power of the evil one. Now, please know, there are a lot of heavy-hitting theologians who have put a lot more emphasis into all of this than, than I am just doing now, of why God's goodness exists alongside evil. This is a very complex issue. But just know that above everything else, it requires for us to have faith to live in this world. So please just bear with me for a little bit as it is important for us to know that sin and evil over this world 
has no lasting effects upon us. Because ultimately, we stand in the light of Jesus' cross and resurrection. Praise God. So in the freedom of God's love, we have the choice. We can choose to live by real faith to the truth of God's goodness, as God is a loving and forgiving God. God does not cause sin and destruction, but God can move through the sin and destruction that we encounter in this world, which is why we need a Savior in Jesus Christ. As it is God's will to save us. And it is God's purpose to save our souls to become more in the image of God's goodness each and every day, to be sanctified, to be set apart from what this world sometimes offers. Because of Jesus, you and I can choose how we will determine to live our lives in faith or not live in faith to God's purpose of goodness and grace. And sometimes living a life of faith is easier said than done. And here again, this is why we need a Savior. It takes real faith to live in this world and beyond. Heaven is our true home. And being together in church helps us, it helps remind us that heaven is our true home. And I love how the Message Bible puts this particular verse from Romans chapter 6, verse 11. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him, but alive he brings God down to us. From now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue. And you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God. This is what Jesus did. And because of Jesus, we are not dead to sin or dead to the sometimes ongoing evil that we experience. Instead, we are ambassadors for Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, the Apostle Paul tells us, So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. You and I are ambassadors for Christ in this world only because of what Jesus has done for us upon the cross. We're not just of this world. We belong to Jesus and we are reconciled through Jesus to God's created order of goodness. And as ambassadors, we can choose to make Christ more alive within us and Christ more alive in those around us through our witness of faith, all because of Jesus. Galatians chapter 1, verse 4 reminds us, Jesus, who gave of himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. As there are things that 
happen to us in this world that we sometimes don't have a valid answer as to why. But to build our faith upon God's truth, even despite not knowing all of the answers, we simply need to go to Jesus' cross. The cross, as it's been said, is the ground zero of our faith. Some of you may remember a couple of years ago the tragic fire that happened at the Notre Dame Cathedral in France. And the day after, when there was just rubble inside the church, the cross still stood. You remember that? There's power in that. In the light of Jesus' cross means for us to be ambassadors for Christ, to fully live in the power of God's forgiveness. And forgiveness, God's forgiveness, unlocks God's power of eternal love in this world and beyond, on heaven as it is in earth. Forgiveness brings heaven down to earth as forgiveness rules this world and beyond. And yes, there are sins that may seem incomprehensible to forgive. Yet this is the world where God has placed us to live. In God's kingdom, in the spirit world of his presence. And in this world, we are called to be transformed into being Christ ambassadors of reconciliation. Not just on our own terms, but on God's terms. And this is why we are called to live by faith. Faith to the promise of God's eternal love. This is the eternal choice that we each must make. As the Apostle Paul reminds us again from our second epistle reading from Romans, for we all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God, so that each of us will be accountable to God. And from our gospel reading, Jesus used a parable in which he illustrated the importance of forgiveness. And he said, we are to forgive not just some of the time, but all of the time through each and every experience that we encounter. Because to be ambassadors for Christ, we must strive daily in our faith, especially at times when it is most difficult to forgive. And a great example of this is given to us through our Old Testament reading, the story of Joseph. Now, many of you know this story, as Joseph was his father's favorite son. son. He was the youngest of 10 other brothers. What could go wrong? And of course, out of jealousy, his brothers threw him into a pit and trafficked him into a life of slavery in Egypt. And they told their father, Jacob, that Joseph had died. Yet in time, through God's grace, Joseph survived. He rose to power within the Egyptian government. And years later, when a severe famine swept all throughout Palestine, Joseph's brothers, they came to Egypt seeking help. And by happen chance, they confronted Joseph, who out of God's compassion forgave them. And by Joseph's forgiveness, they were saved. 
And Joseph, out of faith, he, he spoke these very words. Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended for it to be good. Only God gives us the power to overcome this world. And God's forgiveness unlocks the power of his eternal love on earth as it is in heaven. And because Joseph made a faith choice to forgive, God was able to save future generations of Israelites, fulfilling the promise God had made to Abraham and Isaac and now to Jacob. And all of this happened because of Joseph's faith in God's forgiveness. It's God's plan and purpose for the ongoing redemption of this world. And God's eternal plan of salvation still continues on with us today. We are saved to be Christ ambassadors to this world. And this is eternal, mighty power that we share in God's forgiveness, in the image of God's goodness. Now, worship is all about opening our hearts to the Lord. Take a moment. I want you to reflect. Who might God be placing on your heart this very moment to forgive? In faith, why not answer God's call? Unlock the power of God's goodness into this world. All it takes is real faith. A mighty, eternal power of love is God's action of grace upon us. And we respond in the amazing power of reconciliation. And this has lasting effects upon generations to come. So in faith, let's choose to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ, who has given everything to us to live in this world and with him to come. Amen. And now let us prepare our hearts for the words of our faith in the creed as we recite the words of the Nicene Creed. Please say these words along with me. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Please now prepare your hearts for the prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Andy, Jeff, Hector, and Kay, our bishops, Bruce, our rector, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, you may add your own petitions now. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. You may add your own thanksgivings now. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, and all first responders who serve and protect. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in the trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them, and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, our peace and our strength, we pray for our nation and the world as we face new uncertainties around coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at great risk. Guide us as we consider how best to respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, trusting that you abide with us always through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers that divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth. Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Please recite these words of confession along with me. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. As we cannot celebrate spiritually together in person the sacrament of Holy Communion, please recite these words, pray this prayer of spiritual communion along with me. Let us pray. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the sacrament of Holy Communion is celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive your presence today in the sacrament of Holy Communion, we beseech you to spiritually come into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace. And never let us be separated away from you until that time comes when we will faithfully receive this sacrament. May we continue to spiritually live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let your love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to that which is good. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Hi, I'm Jan Scarpatti. I'm the communications coordinator here at St. Cuthbert. We're going to begin in-person worship on Sunday, September 27th at 10 o'clock. Not ready for in, to worship in person yet? That's okay, because we'll still be online. We will take lots of measures for safety, including registration, so that we can maintain social distancing. There will be a link on our website, stcuthbert.org, the Wednesday prior to the Sunday, where you can sign up to reserve your spot. We will we'll take things slow, prayerfully, and we'll remain flexible as we go forth. There will be a women's Bible study beginning Monday, September 28th at 7 o'clock on Zoom. The ladies will study Matt Chandler's book, The Apostles' Creed. If you are interested in finding out more or, the, or to request the Zoom link, you can email me at communications at stcuthbert.org. The youth group has adjusted their time for school naturally. They're now meeting on Wednesdays from five o'clock till six o'clock via Zoom, and then on Sundays from four till five, also on Zoom. They gather for Bible study, for discussion, for fun, for fellowship. So if you're in sixth grade through 12th grade, email Sally Mahon at sally at stcuthbert.org to request the Zoom link or more information. I hope you have a great week. Stay safe and wash your hands.
Let us go forth to build the kingdom of God together by experiencing the transforming power and accepting love of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Stay safe. I hope to see you soon. God bless.